This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE3303 solids. Got a transverse shear problem here. Now, whenever we see that title, transverse shear, we need to think, and we see what the question wants, shear stress. So we go to the equation sheet, and we look at equations involving shear stress. What causes shear stress? Well, there's one equation given to us, tau average is equal to V over A. That was early on and this question does not ask for average shear stress. We have another form of shear which is tau is equal to T rho over J. You should recognize though that that involves torsion. So we don't want that one. The third one is tau is equal to VQ over IT. And that's actually tidal transverse shear. So that's the equation that we want. So let's look at this problem here. For the T-beam, I bar X prime is 28.9 inches to the fourth. And Y bar is 3.8 inches from the bottom of the cross section. Now that's probably pertinent information, so we should mark that on the section. Sections four inches tall in the skinny or the thin part, the narrow part, and then it's got a big wide flange on the top, so Y bar is given to us as 3.8 inches. Remember that Y bar locates the neutral axis. Neutral axis right there. Therefore, Y bar from the bottom, as the instructions say, is 3.8 inches. <coughs> and once again, we're thinking about the formula that we're dealing with, tau is VQ over IT. Okay, so we note on the section that the shear force is given to us as 12 kips. That's another important piece of information. So, question number nine. For the T-shaped beam shown, determine the shear stress at point A. Point A is here down on the bottom. 1.5 inches off the bottom. And we want to know the shear stress there. So, we say the shear stress at A is VQ over IT. And we know that V is 12 kips. Q, we'll figure here in a minute. I is given to us at 28.9. I is the I about the neutral axis that the shear is perpendicular to. And we want to know what T is. T is the thickness of the cross section at the point where we're calculating shear. We're calculating shear right here at point A. Therefore, that distance is T, so it's one inch. Now, the only hard part about this is Q. It's not really that hard. Q is given to us on the equation sheet. Q is Y bar prime, A prime. A prime is the area of the cross section away from the neutral axis at the point where we're calculating the shear stress. Okay, so Q is the area of the cross section away from the neutral axis. So if we're at point A, it's the area away from the neutral axis as opposed to towards the neutral axis. So it's this area right here. <clears throat> so Q for this shape is one and a half inches tall, one inch wide, so it's 1.5 inches. That's A prime. Y bar prime, this number here, is the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid 
of A prime. Okay, so the centroid of A prime is it's a little rectangle. It's right there in the center of it. So therefore, the distance from that point to the neutral axis is y bar prime. And that's equal to, you have to do a little calculation here. It's 3.8 inches from the bottom of the section to the neutral axis. And then half the height of that little rectangle A prime is 0.75 inches. That's the distance from the bottom to the centroid of A prime. So Y bar prime is 3.8 minus 0 0.75. So now we know A prime is 1 times 1.5, 1 1.5 square inches. So now I can plug into the formula. A prime, let me write that first, is 1.5. That's inches squared. And then y bar prime is that 3.8 minus 0.75. That's in inches. There's my calculation. I do the math and I get 1.90. KSI. And that is answer D. Now I want to know in problem 10, shear stress at point B. And I'm told that point B lies in the wide section of the beam. That means it lies just barely above that point right there, which this has to do with T. So, V is still the same, I is still the same. Here is relating to Q. A prime, the area away from the cross section at the point where I'm calculating the shear stress. And also T, while we're talking about it, is going to be the width of the cross section at the place where I'm calculating shear stress. So that's just three inches, the width of the wide part of the beam. So tau at B is equal to VQ over IT, which is 12 kips. Q is A prime which is the area of this green shaded section that I just drew in, which is 3 times 2, 6 square inches. Y bar prime is the distance from the centroid of A prime, right here to the neutral axis. So that is Y bar prime for B. Once again, I need to do a little math. Um, from the top of the section to Y prime, Y to the centroid of A prime is half of two inches or one inch. And then let's look at this distance here from the bottom, the centroid neutral axis at 3.8 to the bottom of the wide part, it's four inches. So that makes this distance 0.2 inches. 4 minus 3.8 and then this is also one inch right here this dimension is one inches so y bar prime is 1 plus 0.2 is one way of figuring it so q is a prime 6 square inches y bar prime is 1 plus 0.2 which is one way of figuring it amongst many. I is at 28.9. T is the thickness of the cross section at B in the wide part is three inches. I do the math and I get 0.997 KSI. Let me check my units, which I didn't should have done earlier.
inches to the fourth inches. I've got inches cubed times kips on the top, kip inches cubed, and I've got inches to the fifth on the bottom, so I do end up with kips per square inch. 0.997 KSI is the answer. I look at the possible selections and I see 997 PSI. Remembering that a thousand pounds is a kip, so it's answer C.